Welcome to Jared Scott Outdoors. This YouTube channel is dedicated to getting our youth more involved in the outdoors. To do this, I'll be out with family and friends doing all sorts of outdoor adventures. Hey everybody, welcome to my office. I am here with my daughter Aubrey today. Hi guys! And uh, we are definitely not in an outdoor setting, so this is kind of a unique thing. We are doing a question and answer, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is her idea. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey is my social media person and uh, she's always the one <clears throat> letting me know what to do, what she needs and things like that. I'm just trying to get the footage and put shows together and things like that. It usually keeps me pretty busy. So we're doing a question and answer uh, little segment here and uh, we'll just kind of, we'll, we'll get started and go from there, see what happens. So the first question is how did you get started? And and that one, you know, it's always more complicated, I guess, than we want to talk about. But the gist was when I moved to Idaho, oh, it was about 13, 14 years ago, um, I was just amazed at how much there was here. And I grew up in Utah as far as during my teenage years, and there was a few outdoor shows in Utah that highlighted what was available there. And when I came here to Idaho, I just started learning about all the crazy things there are here. There, there's salmon, for example, that go clear into Idaho. That was one of the big ones that I was like, are you kidding me? There's salmon here? and uh, sturgeon, and of course, amazing elk hunting, and things like that. Anyways, just there was so much out there, and there was nothing locally to watch that highlighted the outdoors here in this area. So it kind of just got rolling from that. I got talking to TV stations and, and just trying to figure out logistics of how to do it. And uh, it took a few years of, of mulling it over and figuring out how to do it and talking with TV stations, but eventually we kind of got it going, and that was over 10 years ago. So we've been rolling ever since. And so it's, it, it's, it's a local thing for Idaho. And that, in fact, brings us right to another question that Aubrey was going to answer. Why do we only film in Idaho? So we wanted to do it um, locally based because it airs on the local television uh, channels around eastern Idaho. We wanted to make it so those who are watching could go the next day if they wanted and go do the hike that we did or the fishing that we did. We wanted to make it so they could realistically go and do that. So we've thought about branching out and going to Boise and on different hunts, but then that just makes my dad have to travel away from family, which he didn't really want to do. He wanted to be part of the family and with the family as much as he could. So that's why we've stayed locally in and it, it does. Idaho. It comes up every couple of years. Hey, you know, how about you get on cable? Let's go national, or let let's just expand. And and it, it's kind of appealing, you know, that that whole thing of being a national name and all that kind of stuff. But not really, you know. I for me, it's family. It's about the family and staying here. I want to be home. I don't want to be traveling all the time. And and that's the appeal that people have here in Idaho is they like the show because it's local and it's family. And why change it? So another question, do you edit your own shows, and if so, how? The answer is yes. This is kind of a one-man show. It's a small market here in southeast Idaho, and I did start out in the very beginning with some help. Um, I had great help from an editor, and we both got kind of busy, and, and, and my editor got too busy, and so um, she kind of helped me out and kind of lined me out on how to use the software, and so then I started using it, and... And so really after about one year, I've been editing and doing everything myself, just that one man show. And so, you know, in basically we just go out and we film. You, you can see it's real. It, it is what it is. Um, I, I don't have fancy filming equipment, things like that. We've just got a camera and we're just showing what happens. And of course we try to, you know, talk about things in the field when we can. And then I get home, I look through all my footage. I know how long it, it needs to be. And basically I'm just trying to tell the story. And so if, we can't tell the story with just what happens out there. I have to narrate over some of the just footage that we get. And so then I watch it and I type up everything that's kind of going on, what I need to narrate to tell that story of that adventure. I type it all up and then once that's done, I record into a microphone on the computer and bring that footage or that, that audio in and I splice that with the video and just basically, you know, combine all of those things and, and Again, I'm just trying to tell a story on what that adventure is. Sometimes it's super exciting. Sometimes it's not catching a fish or not getting what we want. But that's that's my goal is just telling a story. And from that, after he gets the videos edited and ready to air on television, I'll then take that episode and on Adobe Premium, I will edit out all the commercials and just r random spots that don't really need to be in the YouTube video. 
and then I combine those all together and then you have the YouTube video that you're watching right now. So we kind of tag team it and get it ready so you guys can watch it and enjoy it. So there are some things on YouTube you're missing out on. We we do some things locally here, Camp Chef Contest. Camp Chef's an awesome company and they and they uh, we give away stoves and things like that. But again, it's local. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to make that something we can just throw out for the whole YouTube um, subscribers. We're still working on that. But, but there are segments we pull out and just kind of shorten it for YouTube. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of how that rolls. And that brings into another question. We don't have a film crew. We film everything ourselves. We have two cameras that we'll give to whoever is with us, and whatever footage they can get, they can get. That's why sometimes we don't have the archery shot or the gun shot because we're busy trying to get that shot and we're not focused on filming necessarily. So sometimes you don't see the exciting parts. You just get the after story of because we don't have a film crew filming us every step of the way. We're trying to do it ourselves. So another question we had was, is there an open date to shed hunting? And the answer to that is yes and no. Depending on the area you go in, you have to check the regs to make sure. There, it's restricted to a certain point. And around eastern Idaho, for some areas, that starting date is either going to be April 15th or May 1st. So just make sure before you go out shed hunting, you check the regs, check the area, make sure where you're going is open for the time that you're going to be there because some spots are open year round, you can go whenever, and others are restricted to a certain point. So just check the areas. And you might not regs. really find the regs as much information in the regulations, the hunting and fishing regulations, because it's kind of different. And that's actually a frustrating thing I have that I wish it was a little bit more, more out there, set in stone on what it is. But... Um, you need to talk with your hunting, your your forest service, as well as a fishing game office, and just find out because a lot of it isn't posted very well. So again, April fifteenth, May first, depending on where you go. Some areas open all the time. Wyoming, everything on from the Continental Divide west in Wyoming, everything closed till May first. And so again, just depends on the area you go in. The biggest thing is because they're trying not to pressure those wintering animals. So if you're in an area that has a lot of wintering animals, usually they keep those closed longer and so you know regardless of what the regulations are if you're heading out that's probably the biggest thing is just you need to make sure not to pressure the animals um, as much as you can because it's a sensitive time for them all right so now i'm gonna now i'm gonna jump onto a topic that i get a lot of flack for and i get it i get it why do you hold the pole wrong so many times um the biggest reason is I'm right-handed. Everything I do is right-handed, but for whatever reason, I grew up fishing left-handed. And if we're out with people, everything is usually set up right-handed. And so I am used to reeling with my right hand, where most people, if they're right-handed, they set with their right hand, reel with their left. And so it, when you go to reel with your left hand, you got to flip it up. That's really the biggest reason why I get caught and then I and I just naturally do that. I don't care if the reel's up or down. I know you're supposed to. I don't care. I still catch the fish either way, quite honestly. But I get home and I look at my footage and I'm like, oh shoot, here I was with the pole upside down again. But that's really that's the biggest reason right there is I just I fish left-handed for whatever reason. Grew up doing that. And uh, most poles and most of my kids fish right-handed. So we've got all these poles that are set up that way. And I try to remember usually when I go to whatever pole I think I'm going to use to switch that reel over. But anyways, my bad. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> I still catch fish and, and uh, don't worry about it. You may see on our clips that we have a lot of elk videos. We've actually been fortunate to be pretty successful the last several years with uh, with archery elk hunting, and, and that was one of the questions, is how are you so successful archery elk hunting? I'm gonna let Aubrey catch this one. So, first off, <clears throat> archery elk hunting is our favorite way to hunt. Um, it's just something about having to get super close, hearing the bugles right next to you, putting in the effort, putting in the work, it just makes it super thrilling. It's just different than rifle hunting. And so how we are so good at it, and we're not professionals by any means, <laughs> we just, we put the work in, we are constantly practicing. As if the weather is good, we're out there shooting at the targets, you know, getting our practice in. And we also, we know the area we hunt. We've been hunting in the same spot for archery elk for 14 years. So we know the area, we know the elk, we know how the elk are gonna react to certain things. And so that's probably a big thing is just knowing the area. We make sure to get in deep and to hunt hard. 
we go in the spots that most people aren't going to think of going. We get away from the crowds. We just, we put in the work and the effort to be good, and that's probably just the biggest thing. Just put in the effort, put in the work to get good, practice all the time. Um, if you have a spot in your backyard or around your house you can go to, go to that. If you need to go to an archery area, I guess, what, what would it be called? An archery range. An archery range. <laughs> We're fortunate to have a really nice spot on the side of our house, so she's never had to go to I've an archery range. I've never had to go to an archery range, no, so that's why I don't know what to call it. <laughs> But yeah, archery ranges, backyards, It, it really whatever. is, though. It's just working really hard. We mm -hmm. hunt hard. And, and it makes it for a really hard pack out when we're packing an elk out. I'll tell you what, we pay for it. But we end up forgetting the pain later, and, and we just enjoy the experience and the memories from that. But we do hunt really hard. Um, there, there's no way around that, and I really think that's probably the biggest thing. We just try to get away from the crowds. And as she said, we know the area pretty good because we've hunted it so much. So we kind of know where we should expect elk and where they're going to go if they get pushed and things like that. But the other question relating to that is how do you find your spots to hunt? And again, it's been 14 years since I started there. As soon as she could hunt, she was up there with me and, and my other kids as well. But from day one, when I, when I moved to Idaho, I just I got online. I looked at the stats. Uh, they've got if you, you can get on there and you can look at success ratios for different units. And it's the same, you know, in any place. You just do this with the area you hunt but we just looked I, I looked at the success rates and i looked for terrain that's the kind of stuff we like like that back country kind of stuff that had a bit of roadless kind of country <clears throat> and so just somewhere where it didn't look like the crowds could get in really easily and uh and i i went there the first year and it was phenomenal you know it's just one of those yeah this is it and so we've been hunting there ever since but that's what i did i just used the stats that are out there uh, because it, it all depends on how you like to hunt. If you like to muzzleloader hunt, archery hunt, rifle hunt, it depends on the kind of hunting you like to do. If you like to hunt over water holes, this place would not be where you'd want to hunt because there's water everywhere and you can't hunt over water. And so it just depends on the kind of hunting you like to do. Here in Idaho, the different units have different regulations. Um, some are catered to archery hunters. Some are catered more to rifle hunters and things like that. So really, you got to look at what kind of hunting you like to do, look at those areas that cater to that, and then just look for the terrain or the, the situations that you think are gonna work. You know, look for good numbers on the stats, and, and then again, just put the time in, but that's what we did. So we get asked a lot in our videos what rifle we used, what bow we used. Um, since archery is my favorite, I know my bow pretty well, so mine is the Eliminator II um, in the Mission series by Matthews. I've been using that one for years. I love it. I'm super comfortable with it, super used to it. Which one she's also doing? really tough. <laughs> and so so she's pull, she's using a bow that I actually used years ago. And then once she got strong enough, she was using some of the other mission series that are made for younger kids. Once she got strong enough, um, she switched to that. But she's got some guns on her. So so she can use she can use a big bow. Uh, I, I use the Matthews as well. And mine is the Halon 32 that I'm using right now. We've been using Matthews again for some time. And, and I guess, you know, what guns, what bows do you use? Again, we, we really like the archery hunting. And so I have more I have more bows than I have guns for sure, because that's my passion is, is bow hunting. That being said, it really isn't the bow. The bow is what's going to make you comfortable. When you have that shot, you know, it's going to be the bow. It, it's, it's comfort. It's how good are you at just coming back and shooting. It feels good. It's smooth. You know, you're not jerking and things like that. So the bow is, is just that. But regardless of whatever bow you're using, it's the practice and everything else and, and putting yourself in the right situation where you've got the shot angle and all that kind of stuff. So to me, it's not the bow. The bow just helps you be more comfortable, which, which does help you be more successful. But it's really about, you know, just getting out there. So regardless of what you have, my first three elk that I shot were all 20 years old when I got my first bow, I, like used. And, and then it was probably, it was several years of hunting before I even shot my first elk. And then I was able to get three pretty close together, but with a bow that was probably 30 years old, you know, at that point. And, and horrible let off. I use it now for bow fishing. You know, it's just, oh, it's a beast. But it worked because at that time, that's what I was practicing with. And it's a horrible bow now, but it still works. So again, 
bows are amazing nowadays. They've made so many neat improvements with bows that they're just incredible. They, they are. And so find the bow that fits you and, and just go hunting because it, it's not the bow. It's, it's everything else that goes in with it and just making sure you're comfortable with that. And as far as guns, again, we're, we're, we're archery hunting guys first and uh, rifle hunting second probably. So I don't have... I don't have that, you know, just line of guns at my house. Um, it's a small area here. I don't have a ton of cash, and so we just get guns. I've got 270. I've got a couple 270s because I've got kids. I really like the 270 because that's the good, in my opinion, a good all-around gun. We can go from antelope to deer to elk with it, and it's just a good shooting gun. So that's probably my favorite one. Um, I do have a 22 250 now if I'm going to go out hunting you know, for, for coyotes or something like that. I did just pick up a 6.5 Creedmoor last year, and that was just to have a gun that would fit my wife a little bit more, something that didn't quite have as much punch um, for deer tags and things like that. So again, I've got a few 270s. I got my dad's old 308, um, things like that. But 270, that would definitely be my favorite one. But again, there's lots of guns out there and lots of them that work out really well, depending on the situation. So that is going to wrap up this question and answer. Um, if they have more questions, put them in the comments below. We'll get them answered as soon as we can. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Now, I've got to I've got to say something here. Again, she's been my social media gal here. Um, she's taking off for the next eighteen months to On serve a, a mission. mission. She, she's she's going to go out and teach about mm -hmm. Christ. And uh, anyway, so she's going to be gone for eighteen months. So she's already been after me for about a month now on, are you going to keep it up, Dad? <laughs> and I'm going to try. So, so put those comments. I'm going to try to get a little bit better at that and uh, set apart some time each week to do that. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But anyways, if you notice that it's not quite the same and that they're not as regular, maybe two come up at the same time. I don't know. I, that's because she's not here. And then when she gets back, she'll fix it all. But I am going to do my best. To, to keep some videos coming up on YouTube and, and to answer questions and things like that. But I am going to miss this girl. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys want to see our previous adventures, some of the things that we were talking about, shed hunting, elk hunts, make sure you subscribe. Go check out that, those videos. Comment your favorite parts. We love hearing from you guys. So keep those comments coming. Again, if you have any other questions, put them in the comments below. And this guy will do his best to answer you. <laughs> I will do my best. So that's going to wrap it up this time. These episodes can't be done without your help. You know the drill. Please make some comments, like, and subscribe. And I'll keep working on more videos.